Do you find yourself frustrated by sluggish Excel files that take forever to load or recalculate? If so, you're not alone. Fortunately, there are many tips and tricks you can use to improve performance. And in this video, we'll identify the most common causes of slow Excel files and how to speed them up so you can improve productivity. There's also a PDF file for this video with links to further tutorials on the solutions I cover that you can download from a link in the video description. One of the most obvious causes of slow Excel files is simply too much data, although this is rarely the sole contributor. The solution is to be diligent and only store data in the file that's required for the task. You can use Power Query to filter out the unnecessary data before loading it to the Excel file. When data is used in a pivot table, it's typically stored in the file twice, once in the worksheet and again in the pivot cache. The solution is to use Power Query to get the data and load it directly to the pivot cache by selecting Pivot Table Report in the Import Data dialog box. Single cell array formulas, those we enter with Control Shift and Enter, can be processed several times depending on the number of cells referenced in the formula. And there are a few solutions. You can try avoid mixing row and column references or overlapping array references. Try separating the calculation into multiple cells rather than an array formula. Move the calculation to Power Query. Power Query only calculates when you load the data or refresh the data, whereas formulas calculate every time something they reference changes, and in the case of volatile functions, every time anything changes. Just note that modern dynamic array functions are more efficient than their older Control Shift and Enter counterparts that I'm referring to here. Nested formulas in Excel, like nested ifs, can cause performance issues because they involve multiple levels of functions or calculations that require more processing power and memory. They can be especially problematic when they involve large data sets, such as when performing lookups or other operations across multiple worksheets or workbooks. So you can try breaking down complex formulas into smaller, more manageable parts, which can help improve performance and make the worksheet easier to read and debug. You can move the calculations to Power Query, where they're calculated once on loading the data, rather than potentially multiple times during the use of the file. Or simply copy and paste the formulas as values if they're not expected to change. Volatile functions can cause performance issues because they recalculate every time anything changes in the workbook, even if the change has no direct impact on the function's output. The solutions are to use volatile functions sparingly, and only when necessary. If possible, use non-volatile alternatives like index instead of offset for dynamic named ranges. You can also switch to manual calculation mode. This way you only recalculate the workbook when necessary using the F-line key. Just be sure not to forget to recalculate. Lookup formulas can cause performance issues because they often involve searching through large data sets, which can be time consuming and resource intensive. The solutions are to use Power Query to perform lookups. You can do exact match and approximate match with Power Query, just like Excel. And there are some links to tutorials for this in the file download for this video. Now, if you must use a lookup formula, store the lookup table and the formula on the same sheet. Also avoid using exact match lookups if you can. Instead, use approximate match with a sorted list. And be sure to only reference the cells containing the data being looked up. Including empty rows in the formula is just going to reduce efficiency. Now I should point out that 365 users may not experience performance issues to the same extent as those using earlier versions of Excel due to the new internal cached index Excel creates for lookup functions. Conditional functions in Excel can cause performance issues because they involve testing each cell in a given range against a set of criteria and that can be time consuming and resource intensive, especially for large data sets. Now, as with the lookup functions, in 365, these functions now create an internal cached index for the range being searched. And this cached index is reused in any subsequent aggregations that are pulling from that same range. So the solutions are to avoid selecting more cells than necessary or use a pivot table instead. Pivot tables can perform these calculations and you don't even need to know how to write the formula. Defined names are recalculated each time a formula that refers to the name is recalculated, even if the value of a cell doesn't change when calculated. Now, defined names are one of the most valuable Excel features, so don't avoid them because they might cause performance problems. 
Instead, check if any of the other causes could be contributing and resolve them first. Then if you still have problems, try replacing names with direct references to cells. The old if is an AV lookup technique requires Excel to do double the work, that is two lookups. Instead, use the if error function or if na function to handle errors returned by lookup functions. As a general rule, external links should be avoided. Links to external Excel files aren't only slow to calculate, they're also easily broken. Plus, many functions can't evaluate on a closed workbook. Internal links can also slow down calculation, so the solution is to use Power Query to bring the data into the current file. And if you must use external links, open the file being linked to before opening the file doing the linking. Excessive self-formatting, including font styles, colors, borders, and other visual attributes that are applied to cells can consume a significant amount of processing power and memory, especially when applied to large data sets. Excessive formatting can also make the file size larger, and that's going to slow down the loading and saving times for the workbook. Instead of applying formatting like cell fill color to a large range of cells, apply it to the whole column or row. It's easier for Excel to know that a whole row or column is formatted in a particular way than it is to keep track of thousands of separate cells. Redundant formatting can sometimes linger in cells unbeknownst to you. Cells can appear empty, but Excel is still storing information about those cells in memory. If you press Ctrl End, you'll be taken to the last cell in the sheet that Excel is storing information for. If this isn't the end of your table, then you know you have redundant formatting. Here, Excel thinks the last used cell is S337, but there's no data in the cells to the left or above it. One way to fix it is to delete rows and columns that are empty, but I've found this often doesn't resolve the problem. By the way, make sure you back up the file before you delete anything. Thankfully, there's a new tool available in Excel Online 2365 users that can check for performance issues like this called Optimize Sheet. It's available on the Review tab of the ribbon. Clicking on the Check Performance button brings up the workbook performance pane. This summarizes the sheets that contain any issues. From there, you can see a list of the individual cells or ranges and the issues. Clicking Optimize All or Optimize Sheet will remove them for you. Storing large amounts of data in Excel tables in Excel 2013 and earlier can sometimes yield worse performance than not formatting it in a table. There's an unofficial cutoff that's more than 500,000 rows by 10 columns. This is sometimes too much to store in Excel 2013 tables, although that can depend on whether you have a lot of formulas or not. If the file is slow, consider storing the data in Power Pivot rather than the worksheet. Power Pivot has an advanced compression algorithm that enables it to store data more efficiently than Excel itself. Power Pivot can also store tens of millions of rows of data and overcome the row limitations of Excel. Files with password protected workbook structures will be slower to open and close than one without a password. Now, given that Excel passwords can be removed easily, you might want to consider whether the password is worth the performance hit. UDFs are typically less efficient than the built-in Excel functions. So consider using the built-in functions. If you need to, break them into separate calculations. Or you could write custom functions with the new Lambda function. Many improvements to Excel's Calc Engine were released for 365 users for sum ifs, average ifs, count ifs, max ifs, min ifs, and their singular counterparts, as well as VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, and MATCH. The improvement is dramatic. For example, calculating 1,200 sum ifs, average ifs, and count ifs formulas, aggregating data from 1 million cells on a 4-core, 2 gigahertz CPU that took 20 seconds to calculate using Excel 2010, now only takes 8 seconds with 365. So where possible, update to 365, take advantage of the new improved functions and calc efficiencies. Also use the 64-bit version of Excel. The 32-bit version that's commonly used for compatibility with old add-ins only has two gigabytes of virtual memory. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful. Don't forget to download the PDF ebook for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.